Okay. Uh, Finally, is it masala chat or chat masala? Chat masala. Chat masala. The name of the podcast. Very nice. <laughs> That's our masala chat now. <laughs> yeah, you like this name? Chat. I loved it. Okay. Fantastic. They didn't keep it. Cha- they didn't keep it chat masala. Instead of keep it chat masala, it's exactly. okay. <laughs> Soon chat GPT masala. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hi everyone. Welcome to our new podcast, Chat Masala. Uh, we're super excited. We want to bring to you industry leaders uh, from around India and perhaps around the world uh, who can share with young people their stories and uh, what it takes uh, to become titans in their respective fields. Uh, so super excited to introduce our first guest. Uh, Mr. Shailaz uh, Nag, uh, I know a lot of young people in India today uh, are very interested in tech, very interested in finance, and uh, as well as uh, entrepreneurship. And I think um, uh, uh, Shailaz here integrates all three. So super looking forward to uh, his insights. Um, uh, Shailaz uh, headed uh, PayU uh, for several years and then uh, is also uh, the co-founder and CEO of uh, DocPay. Uh, I know a lot of you love uh, Big Chill. If you go to the Big Chill uh, website uh, and you want to order, uh, you're using uh, DocPay as well as I think seven, eight million other retailers, restaurants, um, uh, and boutiques around the country. So uh, welcome, Shailas. Uh, Thank you very much you. for having me. Fantastic. So just to uh, just to get started, uh, what are some things you're working on right now with uh, Dot Pay? So Dot Pay has three things. Uh, mm-hmm. One is uh, as on today, but there will be multiple things which is going to come in the future. Mm-hmm. The way we look at our business in three forms is uh, one is the commerce angle, another mm-hmm. is the back end angle, another is the market angle. So our objective is to provide full tech solutions to. The retailers in the country with all the commerce angles, back end handle, and the tech angle. The commerce, back end, and, and tech. And, and uh, tech. marketing, sorry. Commerce, back end, and marketing. Right. Got it. And uh, marketing. So, presently, we are working very enthusiastically and we are very, very enthusiastic about building businesses on WhatsApp. Building businesses on WhatsApp? So, yes. Okay. So, to give you a little perspective, Rahul. 600 million daily active users on WhatsApp in India. So almost a 60% of the or 50% of the population is on WhatsApp today in India. Mm. And uh, half of the businesses works on WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. Even I'm sure uh, Rahul, your business must be running on WhatsApp today. A lot of it, yes. yes right? <laughs> but it is not organized. Never thought of that. Right? Okay. So we are working on building something on WhatsApp where the businesses will fully utilize WhatsApp as a product and that product will be used for commerce, payments, marketing and uh, inventory management, everything around it. This is super interesting because I mean (laughs) millions if not billions of people around the world are using WhatsApp and I must have opened WhatsApp a million times but it never came to me that this can serve as a platform for commerce. So look at it from that perspective. You have certain GB in your phone. Huh. You can download limited apps with you. Mm-hmm. You will not download an app of a boutique from you got your wife gets a that's a salwar suits, right? Mm. You may not download a grocery guy next door neighbor of his app around it. Acha. But would you like to keep his WhatsApp to your number? Yes, you would love to do it. Okay. Very interesting. Now this number should become an app for him within WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. So for him, his phone number is become an app in the customer's WhatsApp. That's what we're trying to promote. I want to point out one thing because I think you're, you're demonstrating this uh, so well. Um, and we tell all of our young people who want to become tech entrepreneurs, tech is one part of it. But you really need to understand people. You really need to understand how they're operating in the world. As you said, you know, we're not going to download an app for the retailer down the road, but you will save their WhatsApp um, uh, number. So I'm actually curious, how, you know, whenever uh, we interact, you're full of so many creative ideas. Um, what is your process for spotting these business ideas? Like, um, you know, I'm, I'm really curious uh, to know uh, where these ideas come from. Yeah. Uh, so look, 
I always say to my friends who are entrepreneurs or who are the CEOs that <coughs> people who knows the psychology of the customers and know them by heart, mm. and people who know psychology and know the heart of their team. Okay. Now it is about bridging the gap between the two, <laughs> right? So it is. That's it, it. It is very important that you as an individual should understand people by heart. Who are your customers, and you should understand hard the people who are building things for that, you. That's so working with you, right? Now that helps me understand the psychology or the or the let me just put it the romance, which is the heart of <laughs> of the people. If 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 they if they if I understand them really well, mm-hmm. I can uh, and then if I understand the team really well, then I can bridge the back and create the creativity around this. Ah, that's that's the way I look at it, right? Uh, now. Coming back a little deeper to it mm-hmm. uh, is 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 uh, you know there's something called like or love, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and like is basically if you like a rose, you will pluck it. Huh. But if you love a rose, you will <laughs> water it every day. Acha. Okay. There's a, that's the difference between like or love. Mm-hmm. And and. This is where it is not the psychologically which you need to know today. It is a constant process of giving water to your customers, constant process of giving water to your team, and then creating creativity around it. Got it. And what does that mean for you? Let's say I'm um, a local retailer. I've come on dot pay. Uh, I really want to grow my business. Um, how are you thinking about me and watering this relationship continuously? Very, very interesting. So I, I'll give an answer before that. Before that, let me just give you one statement. Sure, sure. You know, people think tech finance is a is an interesting job to do it, but say mm-hmm. I think sales is the most interesting job to do in life. Okay, uh, because sales allows you to meet so many people, meet so many customers, understand mm-hmm. psychology, you can build further more around it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one thing which I want to tell you: your sale is done when. When he's sitting with your customer for one hour and half of the time he's speaking. Wow, I've never heard that. Yes. So your you, sale is done when you're sitting with your customer one and half of the time he's speaking instead of you speaking. Okay. Now, Tell me how does that happen? Mm-hmm. And that's where the answer is lies very clearly. Is that how do you do that? Is that when you go to the customer, you don't pitch, you ask questions. Mm-hmm. When you ask questions. What's happening in your life? How's the business going? What are the needs happening? Then he started telling the problems, and then you tell that how can we solve that problem? Mm-hmm. Now, what are you trying to do there? Is that first is your half of the time if he's telling you the problem, that means he's he started liking you. Mm-hmm. Nobody is going to tell you a problem that he, if he doesn't like you, right? Uh, he started telling the problem, then he started liking you. When he started liking you, then nurturing and giving waters to him every day by giving solutions to him is my job. Understood. Now, to give straight answer to the question, you have to constantly understand the problems of the customers with their psychology and their business needs, and keep on providing a solution by giving them orders. Understood. Understood. It's an ever evolving process. Lovely. We'll come back to this. Want to switch tracks a little bit okay. and talk about your uh, teenage years? Sure. Um, uh, what was the inception? Uh, what were some activities you were involved with um, in high school and college, and how did they shape you? What kind of student were you? Anything you want to share? So teenage, do you say teenage means fourteen to eighteen, or is it is it whatever you, whatever would be more interesting, <laughs> right? No, look, uh, I was a naughty child. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Uh, I was very naughty, but I was sincerely naughty. So when I say sincerely naughty, in the sense when the timing comes of studies, I used to study also, and when the timing comes of Badmashi, I do the Badmashi. The timing comes to sports, I do the sports also. Got it. So I had a balance in my life, but the most important thing is that I was true to myself. That what I'm good at it, what I'm not at good at it, and what I can build on it, what I cannot build on it. Hmm. Right. So. And how did you discover that? How did you gain that uh, trueness to yourself? Um, especially in uh, sometimes in Indian culture. People around you, uh, family, teachers are always saying, "Beta, do this, do that." How did you develop the confidence to say, "This is who I am. This is what I want to do." So God was kind to me that uh, since beginning, I don't know why. I'm always a great 
listener in my heart so i keep on listening people mm-hmm. and take it and adopt to myself so mm-hmm. i've been always been okay with criticisms in my life mm-hmm. but never okay. taken negatively criticism always boost me to go up further up okay wow. so i was criticized by every teacher that uh, you had these problems these problems these problems my parents also used to criticize me because my sister everybody used to tell me this you you always play sport you don't play this you know you don't do this stuff so every time i used to get criticized in my life mm-hmm. but i never took it negatively i always took it positive okay, i need to improve this mm-hmm. right uh, so and and i understand here people are listening 20 to 25s and okay, or 16 to 25 my humble request to them mm-hmm. okay, don't there is there is there's a word going called loser right now Uh, in 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 the whole teenage <laughs> world as it is that you are a loser mm-hmm. i personally feel that if somebody is criticizing you're not a loser mm-hmm. if you don't take it positively and work on it then you don't work on it then you are a loser mm-hmm. good point right yeah. so if you if you if i summarize my thesis up i was naughty but i was sincere i i i was very open for criticisms mm-hmm. but i was ready to work on that criticism that's nice very good. i never used to quit that this is the way i am no i is always ready to work on it and that was and now i look back and i realize it this but this is the way i am today also i think it makes uh, sense because yeah. uh, i think these are exactly the characteristics you need as an yes as an entrepreneur because you know the market uh, other people are always telling you are always pointing out oh these are things i can yes. do better and uh, you have to always embrace that reflect on that and come back stronger so and let me just add it to you because this is very critical for these guys to understand you know, because the young thing which i'm seeing in in this alpha generation is quitting faster yeah and that's where i think rahul is very critical i want to i want to tell people very clearly that how does people criticize criticize people criticize in two fashion people criticize on your face that you are bad and all these things or people mm-hmm. started comparing you with the other stuff <laughs> yeah good point <laughs> right they start telling you this guy is doing this stuff that means they're telling mm. you that you're not doing that mm. right now there are two ways to criticize right mm. one way if somebody is criticizing you on your face is your best friend mm. right point. is your best point. friend and take it positively start working along with it right mm-hmm. if somebody is telling you the other person stuff right then i think it's it's better that he also doesn't understand what he expect from you and what he wants to criticize for you got it right so are you saying maybe uh, but, people who compare are, are not the best people people who tell you on the face are the best people but if people are comparing just listen and move on got don't it. put it in a height okay. the only thing that i'm telling you guys in the life don't quit hmm because whatever you do in life till the time you die 99% of the time people will criticize you only 1% of the people will say no really even for you <laughs> every till today wow till today to give an example even if you make rahul you are running this business for how long 9 uh, years 9 yeah. years imagine go and check yourself 99% of the time you will be criticized that you could have done these things much better hmm somebody will come on your face and somebody will write you or somebody will talk at the back of you true but you are moving forward mm. you are constantly trying to move forward mm. because out of that 19 you are figuring out what areas i need to improve and one area which you are good at is you are ex- excelling further appreciate that yeah right so okay. i this is the message i want to give it very very carefully to the people here is that guys this is the way life is and mm. so but don't get who don't do it there are it's better to move on move forward move forward mm-hmm. connecting the i i love this uh, life yeah <coughs> connecting this to entrepreneurship how do you know when okay i need to press through i need to have grit or i need to take a step back and as we say in startups pivot a little bit do you have some insight into that how do you know when you know what i'm doing the right thing i'm not seeing the results i need to push through as opposed to take a push or karna padega any insight on that okay so let me just do three things here first of all in entrepreneurship life out of 365 days out of 365 days in a year mm-hmm. 364 days are bad 
Only one day is good. Please remember that. Right. But that one day makes up for your 364 days. Oh, br- brilliant. Right. Yeah. So that, that you should remember in life. And uh, second stuff. It is not that the next day morning you will start and say that there's something is going wrong. I need to correct it. Right. Mm. It, 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 is, it, is, it doesn't happen that somebody will come and tell you that this is something going wrong. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's your evolving as an individual that is more important. Amazing. Right? Mm-hmm. People, thinks, people think that market will tell you. No, it's market not tell you. It is you who needs to see that market whether it's going right or wrong. It is you who needs to see whether the product is running right or wrong. Because even if somebody will come and tell you, mm-hmm. until unless you are ready to listen to and imbibe that stuff and feel it, you won't change it. Okay, that's an insight. Yeah. Right. So what I'm trying to do is, it is entrepreneurship is an ever ever evolving process as an individual you are. Mm-hmm. Every day you need to evolve, and every day you know, and that evolving process will make you understand whether my business is running fine or not. Should I need to buy it or should I not need to buy it? So much. Good. Right. And how do you facilitate that? So uh, what I'm hearing is entrepreneurship is like karma yoga. Um, tapasya. Tapasya. I love it. <laughs> how how do you how do you how have you evolved as a human being? Do you have any practices? Um, uh, you know, some people journal, meditate. How do you ensure that you're constantly uh, evolving as a human being? And what does that mean to you? So first thing, uh, it may sound very philosophical here. No, no, that's, 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 that's the way. Deep. That's the way. I, I love this. right. Uh, it is. It may sound. Very, I fundamentally believe, and this is after so many years of my life, <laughs> right? Uh, every individual, like everybody says it, so I'm also saying this, mm-hmm. is that every individual God has given certain strength. Mm. Right? I don't yeah. believe in weaknesses, by the way. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't really like the word weakness. I like the word strength. Right? God has given the word, God has given strength to everybody. Everybody is come with some kind of strength. Yeah. So every day in the morning when I get up, I tell myself that God has given me these three, three four strengths. I need to develop this further and become an excellence in this. Right? That's yeah. the okay. So because I don't believe weakness, and I'll tell you the theory behind it. Right? Long answer to this very clearly. I right the theory to it very clearly is that if uh, if you have a weakness. Uh, which is 10% of overall 100% of your life is whatever you work you will take this 10% to 30% 40% if you have a strength where you are sitting at 40-50% if you work on it you will excel to 70-80% I see so the return we we, we love this term in uh, Aritina pro T return on time investment is much higher for a strength strength got it very clear because then you are excelling in something Mm-hmm. If you are trying to improve your weaknesses, then you are not excelling on something. You are actually just then you are nowhere. Fifty percent there, forty percent here. Then you are nowhere in between. You are sailing in nowhere boats in life. Mm-hmm. So it's better to work on your strength and excel that further. So coming to the answer to the very clear yeah, that I go and see myself every day that how God has given me strength and how do I improve it every day further. Okay. First, second stuff very critically the process is to never look back in life. Never mm-hmm. ever. If you ask me how like people remember, I remember my twelfth farewell, these things happen, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Exactly, I don't remember. People ask me, your daughter was born, you cried, I don't even remember it. Got right? It. Personally also, mm-hmm. that's sad on my part certain times, but that's the way I look at so I, I think you should never look back in life, mm-hmm. right? And you should always look forward. Uh, that, that's mm-hmm. the way you should live it. So, I don't see what happened yesterday. I see what's going to happen today. But what about looking back to really analyze um, what went right, what went wrong, what you should do more of, what you should do less of? I mean, do you see value in that? How When I say look back, doesn't mean that you should not analyze the past. Look back in the sense that the look back in terms of the problems which you faced it and you cannot solve it or your crit- people criticized you or not solve it, right? Gotcha. 
okay. or what not worked out for you is not going to look mm-hmm. back look Correct. forward means keep on moving to solve the problems every day understood understood right don't live in any regret okay this no happened always okay what can we do now what's, what's the best we can do now third very clearly everybody has a constraint on resources in life mm-hmm. right when i say constraint on resources whether it is in terms of the monetarily whether it is in terms of timing whether it is of the people whether it is of connections or anything another source in life right mm-hmm. you will be always be constrained and there is somebody who is always going to be ahead from you mm-hmm. some will have more money some will have more resources somebody will have more connections somebody will have something or in life mm-hmm. right you will always find somebody is higher than you in life and you will be always be feeling constrained in life so life is always been the constraint <laughs> now so that does mean how i think about it is that what are the resources which are available with me and how can i use these resources to make it a much more larger game for me and for that i need to evolve it amazing it's such a simple and powerful yeah. philosophy okay these are the resources i have it's yeah. like okay these are my cards in yeah. poker how do i play this yeah. hand as well as possible to yes. get to the next level um so three things very clearly you know that it's there's no set stuff was that you have been you have the strength just work on that stuff right? yeah, yeah okay you have the resources mm. very clearly and everybody will have constraint in the resources work on resources what you have and build on the top of it and you will evolve every day third never look back and see a regret in life uh, look keep moving forward mm. keep moving forward that's amazing that's amazing love that um curious um how do you apply these principles as an adult um uh now like what are some challenges uh you faced in recent years um uh, i know there have been so many ups and downs with covid and so on uh how do you inspire motivate yourself and the people around you uh to look forward and be solution oriented so by god grace i never had that moment in my life <laughs> right and i said hello i've got a lot of i have more downs than the ups right <laughs> i think it's because <laughs> Then yeah, you are anything but dull. Yeah, yeah. So, but I never feel dull about it. I I feel there is something to improve every day, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and 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 uh, honestly speaking, these three things which I said keep me moving. Yeah. Keep so moving. what I'm hearing is like I think um, the perspective you bring, uh, your view, how you uh, see a situation really changes. Yeah. how you interpret it right you can you can either look backward and have regrets or be like okay what can i learn now let's focus on solutions which is also how you approach um uh, business you know what are the problems uh, you're facing your customers are facing constantly communicate constantly. with them um and i like what you said like know their heart uh, yes. know your team's heart and yes. just keep moving well wow. uh, look an analogy is like these guys are playing the young guys who are playing sports also nowadays so look sports teaches you a lot which sport did you play you, you i play everybody Every- played cricket in india so i also okay. played cricket in india right so nothing new but if i if i look back and see myself like if you ask me whom you look up to in life hmm. i look up to kapil dev i look up to saurav ganguly i look up to mahendra singh dhoni hmm. i don't watch cricket because the skills Mm-hmm. because of the thrill i watch cricket to see how these guys behave in a particular situation mm-hmm. right i I'm, i'm i'm still not a great fan of virat kohli but i'm a great fan as a batsman to him not as a great fan of a leader mm-hmm. but the but the way dhoni ganguly or uh, or uh, kapil dev was taken the country in a very different fashion as a cricket as a country and how they behaved in a particular situations that matters to me a lot what were the, what were the life lessons you garnered from these cricket captains look it's well known fact but still i'll put it into from my own perspective uh, so why i love three of some the, people in this uh, some youngsters may not, may not even know kapil dev so let's i think after 83 people know it <laughs> right so look uh, how I, i'll tell you the difference now and three are very different leaders ha uh, okay, okay. Uh, kapil came in into the country when people used to think was we are just playing for the sport for those just playing playing for the playing for the purpose mm. nothing there was no the purpose behind playing this sports right now right uh. but it transformed the cricket into a getting cricket world cup and then it becomes a what mm. do you call it like, 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 like national sports, sports now <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. 
Sora Ganguly came in when Indian country was in a deep, Indian cricket was in a deep state, uh, very very deep th- threat right now. That time where there were uh, there were controversies all over around. Where Sachin mm-hmm. was the captain, Najuddin was the captain, and there were a lot of controversies right. going on. He built a team from there and get them confidence. And I'll tell you the different theories around it. Now that's where it's all business and the theories are with this. <laughs> and Dhoni came in when there were too many big leaders in the team, and then he combined the team and took it up. Got it, got it. And gave them confidence that we can win the World Cups, all the world, right? So, mm-hmm. and I'll tell you the difference theoretically leadership theories around it. Okay, uh, wow, uh, yes. right? So, if people understand cricket, in the cricket there is one three twenty has come now. Let me just compare all of them with the, the one days because mm-hmm. three of them has either Gangguli has reached the World Cup final and, or two of them has won the World Cup finals. Mm-hmm. Right? So let me just give you theory. In the, in the cricket, what happens is. First to 15 overs are power play overs. Mm-hmm. Now it's first to 10 and then you can take 10 to 20 and everything. But there was yeah. a time of 1 to 15 used to be the power play over and then 15 to 50 used to be normal overs. Now there are power play which comes in 10 to 50. Now look at the theory of these three very guys differently. Mm-hmm. Right? Kapil there was a time that he used to give confidence to the guys we can play 50 overs. Oh wow. Right? There was a lack of confidence. There was a lack of confidence. Oh, wow. Right, he gave that confidence that we can play 50 overs, mm-hmm. and then we get them out and we can win the game also. So there was lack of confidence in the team to win. He gave mm-hmm. that confidence to the team. Now, how did he give the confidence to them? Because he keeps on believing in himself and keep on giving believing to other people also. Mm-hmm. Then one at a time, one match winning, second match winning, third match giving them, we started build the giving momentum. them build the momentum around that confidence. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, this is the way he talked to me, play 50 overs, don't worry about anything, we can win it. Mm-hmm. It is not about that we can get out at 40 overs, you have to win that game at 50 overs, that's the, that's the mm-hmm. confidence he gave. Saurabh Ganguly came in, of course he built the team around it and everything, but the most important thing is that if we have to make 300 in a 50 overs, he will come and go and tell it to Sevan and Sachin, dude, this is a 15 overs, you have to make 150 out of this, after the other 35 we can only make 150 because then Rahul Dravid is coming. <laughs> right or I am coming or whatever it is right these are the two f- opening you have to get maximum run in first 15 because there are field is less now mm-hmm. that is just the fun part of the story but the field is inside and then you can get a one, 150 150 uh, runs in this and then we can make it a 300 run around it mm-hmm. right got it so now let's come Dhoni game mm-hmm. he completely turned around he said that we don't have a problem in 50 overs because now we know how to play 50 overs. Why should we worry about play overs? Mm. Let's keep the wickets intact mm. with us. Even if the 100 runs required in last 10 overs, we'll make it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right. Now, the confidence in himself that even if I come at 10 overs, I can make 100 runs. Mm-hmm. Right, the confidence is the, that confidence is rubbing off to other players that we can also do it. Got it. Right. So mm-hmm. now different leadership quality, different thought processes, different confidence level. Now he gave the confidence that he can play fifty overs. He gave the confidence that even if we make hundred runs in fifteen overs, we can win the game. We can make three hundred. And third guy said that don't worry, keep the wickets in. We can still make three hundred even if we got hundred runs in just ten overs. Amazing. Right? So, he, the guy started getting very confident. Now, let me just give a further deeper to it. If you don't mind, I'll get you a little deeper to it very clearly. Kapil Dev gave confidence that we can play these overs, right? Yeah. Kapil Dev same time gave the confidence that you can play Marka Marshall, you can play Joel Gardner's, mm-hmm. you can play all the biggies of the, the fast ballers yeah, of the yeah, world yeah. and gave them confidence, West right? So, yeah. Ganguly gave and gave them confidence that you are also king. It is not there. The that time Kapil is you can play. Mm-hmm. But the king is them. Mm-hmm. Now Ganguly comes in that, no, 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 we are also the king. Mm-hmm. So he gave that confidence that you are nothing less than this guy. Mm-hmm. Or you may be more than this guy. Got it. Right? That gives aggression in the country. Big time. To Yuvraj Singh, to a to a Harbhajan Singh, to a Jair Khan, to go and play and full aggression around it in life, right? Mm-hmm. Now Dhoni came is completely other way around. Okay. 
right? He said that, okay, now you got, you, you know that you're the king. You know you can play them. Now let's play a completely game of mental. Calmness ke saath, we play this game and very clearly we play with the mind of the other person instead of playing only the skill game. Oof. Got it. Right? Sorry, we're going Amazing. deeper. I love, it. Love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. No, I think um, there's so many life lessons from yeah. from from sports yes. because it's very clear who wins, who loses. Yeah. So you have to, yeah. as you said, you have to constantly improve yourself. Right? Now, what do you yeah. learn from the business point of view in this? Like, yeah. Kapil Dev is a startup point point of view. Oh, okay. Well, Anguli is a middle point for you. Got it. And Dhoni is a finisher for you. Mm-hmm. So, entrepreneurship or life is a cycle, right? Amazing. This is my, you will learn from Dhoni, Virat Kohli and somewhere else, but I learned it from these three, right? So. Amazing, amazing. Wanna, so, how do you translate this into a day? So, kind of making it more tactical. Hmm. Can you walk us through how you structure your day, your morning routine, your evening routine, uh, within work, uh, what you do when, uh, and you know, for, for greatest creativity and productivity? So I, as I mentioned, the day in the morning you start is thanking God what strength you have, mm. go for it. How do you evolve today? That's very important. But the third part which I want to tell you very clearly is Rahul is, people tend to do a mistake in life that they think that if they're speaking more, they're doing more. Mm. So your day should be more listening and adopting than speaking and giving stuff to the people. Right? So I fundamentally believe if there are 10 people in a meeting room and if you are the silent people, it doesn't mean that you are the most idiot. I think you are the most smartest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially in this day and age, it's yes. all about yes. talking, 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 yes. expressing, so, which is important. But Because it is not necessary you need to speak. If you are listening to everybody mm-hmm. and then you have, if you have a strong point of view, then you go come and speak out. That's a better stuff than speaking unnecessarily out of the life. Right? Mm. Because what happens is that you're adopting things much more faster in a listening mode. When, in, in, when you're in a speaking mode, you're not adopting things faster. So I always fundamentally believe what is the strength way you need to play. You have to evolve every day, but you need to also keep on listening to the people in life. As I mentioned, customers like you have to keep on half after them, he's speaking and you're listening and you want it. But listening is a much better skill which I want people to learn now as compared to speaking around it. Got it. Active listening. Okay. <laughs> love it. Love it. Um, we want to start a start a new segment here. Sure. Um, kind of a rapid fire round. Uh, have a few questions here. If you can limit it to maybe three words or a sentence. Three skills you want young people to focus on. I think skill is overrated. Uh, attitude is underrated. So I would rather mm. go for attitude than the skills. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, so three things uh, I think I think uh, very clearly is uh, focus. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, the attitude has to be the focus has to be completely. They don't clutter your cloud your mind with too many stuff. Very clearly. Okay. Second is stuff keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. There's no other way in life keep moving, in life to move. This is the way life will keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. Right. And third, very interesting, like, be desperate in life. Who? What do you mean? You have to explain if you're that. a desperate, you, that's a great attitude. Hungry? You mean like stay hungry? Hungry is still not the word. Desperate. Des- I want to achieve this. Ooh. Right? I want to do this. I, I have to ask, how do you, so would you consider yourself desperate even now? Every day, every minute. How do you keep that desperation up after, you know, you've, You've achieved uh, a certain level. As I said, every, there's somebody higher than me in <laughs> life any time. And other part of the story, I'll tell you very clearly this. How do you keep desperation? Mm. We are the only country which is, which is developing in the world right now. Mm-hmm. We are the only country who has the biggest of the opportunities because we are the highest growth country in the world. Mm-hmm. We have so much to do in this country. Mm. I, so answer to the short answer to the question is everybody creeps about it. There is always in the country. Go and go and work on it, man. Right. So there are too many things to do. So that's a desperation for me to make things happen. 
well, so the mission is far beyond yeah, yeah. yourself. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's national yeah. development. And money follows, nay fame follows, fame follows. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. reminds me of that. 3 yeah. idiots quote. Lovely. What, what's one value you hold? I think you got, you got that attitude over, um, over skill. But is there any other value? That, yeah, so uh, look, I, look I, two things which I fundamentally, fundamentally believe in life. Well, mm-hmm. no, very, very fundamentally believe in life. Being humble and integrity. Humble and integrity. Whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a mentor, whether it's an investor, anything around in life. Team. To an extent, maid. To an extent, your driver. Mm-hmm. Anything around in life. You need to be humble and integrity. Be honest to yourself, to other, and be humble to yourself and others also. Mm-hmm. Got it. Whether it's mm, people at home or anybody you interact with uh, Google Ventures and so on, same same yes. philosophy yeah, applies to anywhere to everyone. Anywhere humans are humans. Okay. Anywhere because that will only take you up uh, in life. Because when you're humble, your integrity is high. You will be able to listen to people in a very different fashion. Hmm. Got it. What is excellence to you? Excellence is blank. In a lifetime, you can never achieve hundred percent anything in life, right? So for me, excellence is a word when you achieve seventy to seventy-five percent of any any skill, any attitude, anything you wanted in excellence in life is when you achieve anything on 60, seventy to seventy-five percent, you achieve certain excellence. Right, so there's nothing called hundred percent. Like light is also evolved. Somebody is, some scientist has built built light or bulbs around it and light. But that is also lighting. Lighting is also evolving, Got right? It. So nobody that time he achieved excellence of seventy five percent. But that is also evolving every day. So excellence for me is anything at a particular period of time, which is supposed to achieve and you achieved at seventy five percent. That's excellence. Interesting. Okay. Lovely. And one question we love to ask is, uh, what's one thing you know now that you wish you knew when you were 20 years old? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot. Let me tell you. I think I've done, in fact, everybody, everybody done much more mistakes than, than, than the good things yep, in life, yep, right? Yep. So, but, but uh, I think... Me personally, I've done much more mistakes than the normal guys can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right? sure. uh, so, uh, it is a little emotional answer, but let mm-hmm. me just give an answer. I think if I've heard my father properly in my teenage, mm-hmm. I would have been a much different person early, stage, early in my life instead of realizing it later in 35 years away that my father's were right. Mm-hmm. My father was right, and then I need to, I need to. Uh, I need to list. I, I need to do what there's was, wisdom uh, there, there's wisdom, and uh, I didn't do it. And uh, this is humble request to all of you guys who are listening right now. Here is that when everything is going good, there will be people around you who will mm. tell you all the good things. But when nothing is going right for you, it's your parents who are going to do it. So do remember one thing. Your parents are always with you and parents' wisdoms are always helpful for you in life. Nobody can guide you much better when you're down, your parents can. Hmm. That is very, very clear. So the kids does mistake nowadays, but honestly speaking, when you're down, your loved one, which are your parents, can only give you right advice. Otherwise, people can give you a lot of advices, a lot of gyans you will get it, but loved one will give you the right advices. They know you much better than anybody else in the market. This is true. This is true. Okay, uh, some more rapid fires. Uh, this is about you. What's the most used app on your phone? WhatsApp. WhatsApp. After we know WhatsApp. What's after WhatsApp? Any others? After WhatsApp, uh, it's Google. Google. Okay. Uh, what musical genre do you listen to, or maybe even a particular song? No. Uh, I, I evolve every day, as I said very clearly. So I, 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 Even listen, your I, I always try to listen what young guys want to listen to. Oh, okay, <laughs> wonderful. Keep your finger on the pulse. Um, what's your preferred mo- mode of payment? UPI. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit that. Yeah, no, no, it's okay, UPI. <laughs> Got it, UPI it is. And your favorite sport, I think, cricket? cricket any day. Absolutely. Okay, uh, this or that, uh, Google Pay versus Paytm? Paytm. 
Paytm. Uh, Zomato versus Swiggy. Zomato. Experiential learning versus academic learning. Experiential learning. Tea or coffee? Tea. Tea. And Netflix or Amazon Prime? None of them. No? I don't watch them at all. You don't watch them? Well, well you did watch 83. That was on Netflix. No, but I went to the theater. And oh, <laughs> got me there. Yes. Lovely. What, what, what's, uh, how do you like to spend the evenings after work? If it's my daughters around, I would love it. If they give me time. <laughs> They're difficult. <laughs> Teenagers these days. Yes. Lovely. Yeah. We'll, we have one signature question. I think we'll end uh, with that. Um, I think it puts a cap to everything. Uh, what's one thing you want to see in, in the world or in India specifically in 2023? You know, how, how, what would make you, because you, you think a lot about how, now? how in, in, uh, pardon me, in 2035, oh, let's, no, say, no. let's say, let's say 10 years from now, um, because you're, you're thinking a lot about how India is developing and so on. Uh, what's one wish you have? What's one thing you want to see 10 years from now? Very idiotic answer, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> Those are the best ones. Better coordination between government departments in the country. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is not the capability issue, it's not an attitude issue. It's a coordination issue. Mm -hmm. To give you a simplest yeah. answer, one department will put a red signal on, on the road, the other electric department will come and put a light on the in the front of it and you cannot see the signal. <laughs> right? One department will lay the road, the other department will dig the road for putting the pump, pumps inside. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So, this is at a grassroots level, but at a broader level, there's much more coordination issues. Mm -hmm. Better coordination in this country by using tech mm -hmm. would be a very interesting project. Maybe that's something where young people can get more involved with. Yeah, okay. Let me ask you, Rahul, this question. Yeah. I think you will have multiple departments. Yeah. And the way your business is more people driven as compared to track driven, mm -hmm. right? For you, coordination is much more important. Yeah. Between different departments, mm -hmm. right? Your company will fail if there are coordination issues within the different departments, right? Right. right. It is as true for any corporate, any country, anywhere in the issue that if there are no coordination between different departments. Right. And you, then if people ask me why are you creating different departments the coordination? So different departments required to focus within different areas. Correct. Right? And there's a coordination and communication issues, you will never be successful. So people fails or companies fails because they have internal coordination and communication, not because of the market. Oh, that's that's a heavy hitter. That's a fact. Mm. As I said, India is a full of opportunity. World is full of opportunity. If you are evolving every day, market fit, evolving, everything will happen. But if these two things are not solved within yourself, you have failed. That's Ask yourself. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's right? True. If there's no coordination and communication within the, within the company, you will fail anyhow. I think that's a great, great uh, point to, uh, to end with. Just focus on your own development and in, a, in an organization, development is coordination between departments and and that is a bigger reason companies fail. falter yeah. and even fail than than the market. And then the market. Uh, it's all about yourself. And and so I learned it with very clearly that be selfish. Hmm. Selfish doesn't mean that you don't have humble interest or integrity with other people. Selfish means evolving yourself every day. Look at yourself, introspect yourself every day. That is more important. Basically. Okay. Shall I ask you? Thank you so much. Thanks, buddy. Wonderful. Thank you. Love you. <laughs>